Welcome to Science Era. In this video, I'm going to be discussing thorax, which is chapter number one from Clinical Anatomy. Let's begin. Thorax is that portion of the trunk inferior to the neck and superior to the diaphragm to which the pectoral griddle and upper limbs are attached. Thoracic wall is the bone of thoracic walls are the ribs and sternum. Um, from uh, rib number 3 to th uh, rib number 9, they are called typical ribs. And from uh, rib 1 and 2 and 10 and 12 have specialization or are lacking typical characteristics. So they, uh, they are considered to be an atypical. Let's look at typical ribs first. So their characteristics include head. They have head, neck, tubercle and body. Head bears two facet that articulates with vertebra of same number and vertebra superior to it. Neck of the typical rib joins head with body of the rib. Tubercle of the typical rib which are 3 to 9 articulate with transverse processes of vertebra of the same number. They are located at the junction of neck and the body. Then we have the body of a typical rib. Significance include bare pronounced angle and inferior internal border has costal grooves for the intercostal neurovascular elements. Then we have atypical rib. Atypical, rib, a, atypical ribs are your rib number 1 and 2 and 10 and 12. 1 and 2 they have heads. Number 10 and 12 are uh, ribs. Uh, 10 and 12 are attached uh, attached to the sternum so they are known as stern they have sternal attachments characteristics of a t atypical rib include the head of the first two ribs only attached to one vertebral body unlike typical ribs that attach to two vertebral bodies the first and second rib have additional tubercles for the muscle attachment another characteristic uh, another significance of atypical rib is Rib 10 and 12 attach indirectly or not at all to the sternum and they are also known as floating ribs. Then we have thoracic vertebra. Characteristics of thoracic vertebra include number 1 body which supports the weight. Spinous process and transfer for, uh, processes serve for the muscle attachment. Then thoracic vertebra have lamina and the pedicles from vertebral arc that encloses the spinal cord. Vertebral uh, foramen are formed from the vertebral arc and posterior aspect of vertebral body. They encloses spinal cord. Successive vertebral foramen form the vertebral canals. Then we have vertebral notches. They can be superior vertebral notches and inferior vertebral notches. Inferior and superior notches of adjacent vertebra form intervertebral foramen that permits passage of spinal nerves between the vertebral canal and the periphery. Articulating processes, they have two superior processes and two inferior processes. They form the zygophophysial joints with articulating processes on the adjacent vertebra. Then we have the sternum. Sternum Parts include manubrium, sternal angle, body, and xephoid processes. Manubrium is the superior part of the sternum. Superior border bears jugular, uh, jugular notch. Clavicular notches are found on each side of the jugular notch or for the articulation with the clavicle. Sternum angle of the sternum are the lang landmark for the second rib costal cartilage articulation with the sternum and marks the articulation between manubrium and the body. Body of the sternum bears costal notches up along the lateral border of articulation with costal cartilages and then we have xephoid process, most inferior part of the sternum landmark for the central tendon of diaphragm, superior margin of liver and inferior body uh, border of the heart. True, false and floating ribs. Rib 1 to 7 are considered to be your true ribs as they attach to the sternum via their 
individual costal cartilages. Rib number 8 to 10 are considered as the false rib as they attach indirectly to the sternum via the costal cartilages of more superior rib. Then we have rib number 11 and 12. They are considered to be a floating ribs as they do not con uh, connect to the sternum. Clinical significance include number one, rib fracture. Fracture of the upper ribs may injure the lung and of the lower ribs may damage the liver or spleen or may tear the diaphragm. All rib fractures are painful owing to the broken pieces moving during the respiration, coughing, sneezing or even laughing. Then we have sternal puncture. A white bore needle may be used to harvest bone marrow from the sternum for the transplantation or biopsy. Muscles of thoracic walls. Muscle of thoracic wall, uh, first muscle is your intercostal muscles. They can be external, internal and innermost intercostal muscles. On their proximal end, proximal attachment, they are uh, inferior aspects of rib. They are attached to the inferior aspects of ribs. And at the distal attachment, they are uh, attached to the superior aspects of ribs. Innervation include the intercostal nerves. The main action for the external intercostal muscle is to elevate the ribs. The main ac action of the internal intercostal is to depress and elevate ribs and transverse uh, innermost intercostal muscles only depress uh, and elevate the rib. Then we have transfer thoracic muscles. Proximal attachment includes posterior inferior aspect of the sternum and distal attachment include the posterior aspect of the coastal cartilages number 2 and 6. Transfer thoracic muscle depresses the ribs. Then we have subcoastal muscles. At the proximal attachment, these deep aspect of lower ribs, near angles are there. And then at the distal attachment, superior aspect of two uh, rib number 2 and 3 below proximal attachment. Main action of the subcostal muscle is to depress and elevate the ribs. Then we have the diaphragm muscle. Proximal attachment, sternum, inferior six ribs and their costal cartilages, medial or lateral arcuate ligaments and first three lumbar vertebra. Then we have distal attachment, central tendon of the diaphragm. Innervations include motor, phrenic, sensory, phrenic and intercostal nerves. Main action of diaphragm is to increase the volume of thorax to cause the inspiration. Levator costarum muscles. Proximal attachment include the T7 and T11 transverse processes. Distal attachment, sub, uh, subjacent ribs between tubercle and angles. Innervation includes C8 and T11 posterior rami. They elevate the ribs. Serratus posterior superior muscles also elevate the ribs. Proximal attachment include knuckle ligaments, C7, T3 spinous processes. Distal attachment includes second, fourth rib superior border. And the innervation include the two, uh, second and fifth intercostals muscles. Then we have serratus posterior inferior muscles. They depresses the ribs. Proximal attachment includes T11 to L2 spinous processes. Distal attachment includes the 8th and 12th rib inferior borders and the near angles. Innervations 9th to 11th intercostals and subcostals muscles. Then we have this diagram. This diagram represents the thoracocentesis, an intercostal nerve block needle in image produces anesthesia of an intercostal space by introduction of an anesthetic agent around the intercostal nerve and its collaterals. The tube in the diagram indicate the position of the thoracocentesis. Another diagram represents the holes in the di diaphragm. There are three large apertures in the diaphragm for major structures to pass to and from the thorax into the abdomen. 
The cavel opening for the inferior vena cava, most interior, is at the T8 level and to the right of the middle line. Esophageal hiatus and intermediate is at T10 and to the left of the midline and aortic hiatus for the aorta passes posterior to the vertebral attachment of the diaphragm in the midline at the T12. Diaphragm Diaphragm has three openings that permit passage of structures between the thorax and abdomen. These openings are found at T8, cavel foramen, T10, esophageal hiatus, and T12, aortic hiatus, as we have seen in the diagram before. Clinical significance, phrenic nerve injury result in hemiparalysis of the diaphragm and paradoxical movement during the inspiration. Instead of descending during the inspiration, the paralyzed half ascends in response to increase intra-abdominal pressure. Then we have nerves of the thoracic wall. We have intercostal nerves and subcostal nerves. They origin from anterior rami of T1 and T11 and anterior rami of the T12. Structures innervated include intercostal muscles and parietal pleura, abdominal wall and musculature of the parietal pleura. Another nerve is rami communicatus, uh, communicantus. Origin connect intercostals and subcostal nerve to sympathetic trunk. Structure innervated white conveys the pre, uh, presynaptic sympathetic fiber from spinal nerve to sympathetic chain and visceral apron to the spinal nerve and gray conveys the post synaptic sympathetic fibers from the sympathetic chain to the spinal nerve then we have sympathetic trunk sympathetic change and ganglia parallel vertebral ganglia is where they origin from the structure innervated include composed of sympathetic ganglia containing post synaptic Sympathetic cell bodies connected by the ascending and descending fiber. Thoracic splenic sympathetic chain greater than T5 and T9 at lesser T10 and T11, least T12. Structures innervated include convey presynaptic sympathetic fibers to the prevertebral ganglia of abdomen, conveys visceral afferent to the sympathetic chain. Then we have the atrial supply of the thoracic wall. Atrial supply include internal thoracic artery, anterior intercostal artery, posterior intercostal artery and subcostal artery. Internal thoracic artery origin from the subclavicle. It gives rises to anterior intercostals and musculopharynic nerves. Anterior intercostals origin from the internal thoracic and musculopharynic supplies intercostal muscles and parietal pleura subcostals origin from thoracic art aorta and it also supplies anterior lateral abdominal musculatures venous drainage venous drainage of the thoracic wall generally parallels arterial supply however the posterior intercostal vein drains to the azygous system which is discussed in the posterior mediastinum let's look at joints of the thoracic wall joint number one is first sternocostal type cartilaginous articulation first costal cartilage with manubrium second and seventh sternocostal type is synovial joint articulation second and seventh costal cartilage with the sternum Structure joint strengthens by sternal costal radiata ligaments. Then we have sternoclavicular joint. Type of the joint, it is the synovial type, sternal end of the clavicle with manubrium and first costal cartilage um, they articulate with. Divide into two compartments by articular disc. Joint strengthened by anterior and posterior sternoclavicular and costoclavicular ligament. Then we have manubrio sternal joint and zephy sternal joint. 
they are both uh, they both are cartilaginous joints manubrium with body of sternum form the manubrio sternal joints zephyr sternal joint zephyr process with body of the sternum joint often fuses in the older people then we have intra intercondylar joint sixth and ninth intercondylar joint are synovial while ninth and tenth are the fibrous joint costal cartilages of adjacent ribs form these joints uh, rib number 6 and 6 uh, to 10th strengthened by intercondylar ligaments costochondral are the cartilaginous joint formed between costal cartilage and uh, with end of the rib bound together by periosteinum little if any movement permitted intervertebral they form symphysis joint adjacent vertebral and bodies strengthened by anterior and posterior longitudinal ligament and the angular ligament then we have costo vertebral joint and costo transverse joint they both are synovial joint costo vertebral joint articulation head of the ribs with vertebral bodies at same level and the vertebral body superior to it costo transverse joint tubercle of the rib with transverse process of the vertebral body at the same level costo vertebral <coughs> joint strengthened by radiati and intra uh, articular ligaments first 11th sec, uh, and 12th and sometimes 10th rib articulate only with vertebral body of the same level costo transverse joint strengthened by lateral and superior costo transverse ligament 11th and 12th ribs do not participate in the costo transverse joint this brings us to the end of today's video thank you for watching in the next video i'm going to be discussing anatomy of breast if you like my video don't forget to subscribe for more